Hey everyone, I'm back with another RiffCAD video, and that's because there's been a huge update that's come out on the beta channel just recently. Also, for more big news, there's going to be a big Christmas sale coming up in the near future as well. That sale is going to be happening from December 17th all the way through the new year to January 2nd. So if you have been waiting for just that right time to pick up the full license of RiffCAD, now is your chance. Also, to sweeten the deal a little bit, I'm going to be giving away 10 licenses that are going to give you unlimited access for life. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the video. For now, let's just get into some of the new updated features on the beta branch. Now, if you've used RiffCAD in the past, you probably already know that the software is really only meant for games that don't require motion controllers. This has been one of the bigger limitations to the software as it's kind of shut the door on a lot of different games. Now, yes, there are ways around this using things like Nolo controllers, PlayStation Move controllers, as I've posted in previous videos, but all those ways really required a bunch of extra hardware and a little bit more third-party type setups. This is where this new RiffCat tracking update comes into play. Because with this new tracking update from RiffCat, you can actually play games that require motion controllers with your keyboard and mouse, or even your Xbox controller. This means that there's a lot more games on Steam VR that you can actually play with some success. One game that I tested that I found worked particularly well was Space Pirate Trainer. But after we take a look at some of the settings in the desktop app, we're going to do a demo of that game to see just how well this can work. So let's head over to the desktop now and take a peek at the new features. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail as far as how to get RiffCat set up, but we're certainly going to take a look at a few of the new settings in here. So once you have your phone connected, jump into the configuration settings on the left side. You'll see here that there are a load of options for motion controller support here, namely the mouse and keyboard option along with the Xbox controller option. To enable either of these, just toggle the switch next to it. Now we'll take a look at some of the settings by clicking on the gear next to the option you want to use. In here, the first time that I saw this, I felt a little bit overwhelmed, but for the most part, you can leave all of these settings to default since I feel like they worked pretty good. After playing around a bit in game, you may want to change some of the movement or body settings once you get a little bit more comfortable with how they work. Now, the key bindings on the right side is pretty busy, but just like any other game, these will quickly become muscle memory. I mean, take a look at the key binding list for some of the other games that people memorize and don't even think twice about anymore. What you see here is considered normal for a lot of FPS games. And if we switch over to the Xbox controller settings, things are going to look very similar, but it's just for an Xbox controller instead of the mouse and keyboard. One thing I would like to talk about that isn't explained super clear are these special actions that you see listed. What that really means is pretty much just controller movement actions. So in this example here, left and right will switch between these actions right here to move your controllers around the screen. So when you start up a game, up and down under controller will be controlling your arm length. Press right, and that'll switch the mode to be hand tilt now. Then you press up and down on the D-pad to control the hand tilt. And then pressing left and right switches the controller mode again, and so forth. Nice little touch with this is that when you press left and right on the controller, the controller will give a slight little rumble, letting you know you've changed different modes. This way you're not going to hit anything by mistake. So outside of using the D-pad to switch the positioning of these controllers on your screen, the controllers are otherwise just going to stay put exactly where they are in relation to the way you're looking. That means to move them around, you just got to look around with your head. Because of the way that this works, really quick and precise movements with independent hands is just not possible. So don't expect to hit any leaderboards on Beat Saber if you're using your mouse and keyboard. This being said though, if you do try Beat Saber with this, I need to see this. Also, if you know of any other games that would work well with this controller update, let everyone know in the comments below so everyone can try different things out. Now, Outside of this controller support that's been added, one last feature that I really wanted to mention that is really cool is that you can now use the camera pass-through while RiffCat is running. This means you can look out of the lens of your camera while you still have the VR headset on. This makes things a lot easier to change on your screen and also deal with real life without taking the headset off. This feature will probably come in surprisingly handy and it's a very smart addition. So let's give this thing a try as promised and we'll fire up some Space Pirate Trainer to see how it works in action. All right, so here we are at a game and as you can tell, the only thing I'm using is an Xbox controller. And uh, when, I was, when I was talking before about the controllers just being stuck where they are, this is what I mean. So as I look around, those guns are going to fall on my screen and they're going to be in the exact same spot right in front of me all the time. Now, uh, to give you an idea of what the, uh, those special actions mean, uh, if I move up and down on my D-pad right now, it's on the, the tilt action right now as it is. If I move to the right, 
D-pad right. Now it's going to be arms forwards and backwards. If I move to the right again, we're going to be up and down. And then I can tilt again a little bit there. So it just kind of cycles right through everything. So uh, another cool, a couple cool things too with key bindings as well, uh, or button bindings or whatever you want to call it. You can jump with one of the uh, buttons. I believe it's A on my controller. I obviously can't see it. And then you can also duck. So the jump in this, I don't know, you're not going to use it too much, but the duck's super handy because if bullets come in, you can duck out of the way. Because looking at me here, if I move my head side to side, like it doesn't even move at all. And that's because this has no positional tracking. Uh, it's got rotational, but it doesn't track where I am in the room. And that's where the controller options are really going to help because now I have the uh, thumbstick on the controller and I can move left and right. And I can move forwards and I can move backwards. Just kind of like I was playing, you know, like an FPS game almost. So uh, that gives you, that, that kind of solves the issue of not having the head positional tracking. So now the controller issue is solved, the uh, positional tracking is solved, and uh, sorry one second, my screen's kind of going nuts. I, I got to admit my uh, network is not properly set up for RiftCat anymore, so um, I'm just kind of making do with what I have. But anyways, let's try out a game here and we'll see how it works. Actually, sorry, one more thing I wanted to get into is the bumpers on the top of the controllers activate your D-pad. So I can still... I can still try and change the different uh, guns. So I can go... You know, normally you just have to move your D-pad around, but now I can hold the left bumper, and now I can change it on the gun. So I can go, uh, you know, maybe... Let's see. Let's go grenades on this one. And on the right gun... Let's go with, uh, oh, oh, I guess I can't be, yeah, I guess I can't be pointing at a menu item. Uh, yeah, let's stick with the machine guns. I really like those. Perfect. And then, of course, your triggers on the, uh, on the back is, so it's left controller on the left side, and right controller on the right trigger. Right trigger is your right controller, so, um, pretty self-explanatory. But anyways, let's give a game a go, and you can kind of how effective this really is in this game and it's it's really cool actually and the aiming is actually surprisingly easy and the, I guess the cool thing is your hands stay really steady <laughs> figuratively speaking I guess I mean, who would have thought you'd be playing a game like Space Pirate Trader with an Xbox controller? I hear it. I get out of the way of those. Oh, come on back. There we go. One thing I did learn in this game, though, is that if you go outside the play space, I won't let you shoot anymore. So if I go way the heck away. Doesn't let me shoot. I guess it can still shoot at me though. You know, even with my network not properly set up for this kind of bitrate, up here on uh, wireless on my phone, the response time is surprisingly incredible. I, you know, last time I was using Riftcat, I don't exactly remember it being as uh, as quick as this. Like, I don't feel, and, and I mean, let me tell you, I'm, I'm used to using my Rift, and I don't feel a whole ton of lag. We, we. I don't want to get that power out. I can take this guy without a power. Later, bro. Get it. Now let's get the power up. I, I don't know. I almost feel like this is kind of 
kind of too easy. Ah, uh, you know what? I want to get rid of my grenades. I'm not a huge fan of the grenades. I just like the old-fashioned multi-shot or fast shot, whatever you want to call it. One more, right? Yeah, there we go. Oh, there it is. And a duck! Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I hit him any button. Whoa. Oh, I did it again! The so Ripcat, if you're watching, uh, maybe we can... I don't know what we can do about that, but I... Moving with my left thumbstick, I've now twice hit SteamVR menu button and uh, brought up my SteamVR dashboard. Maybe it, maybe it should be like a long click. Yeah, let's do that. See if you can make it like a long click on there. Because I just clicked it for a second and it brings it up right away. Oi! I didn't mention in this is that you would typically reach behind your back to grab your shield. Well, guess what? You're not doing that. You are, uh, you're shieldless. So. idea of how the game runs and uh, as you can tell you could you can actually be pretty competitive in this which is which is outstanding uh, and, and you know previously with Ripcat there was no way you were ever gonna play this game uh, you know without any kind of motion controller so it, it was absolutely impossible so anyways we're gonna go back to uh, the computer and we're gonna wrap things up so as you could tell that game plays super well and I bet any other VR wave shooter is probably gonna work just as good but keep in mind, this controller update is still in beta phase, so there's probably still gonna be some customization and tweaks and performance increases coming on down the road. So lastly, let's talk about the giveaway that I'm running for the 10 free keys. To enter the contest to win one of the 10 free keys, check the description below. I've got a link to a gleam.io contest. The draw for this contest is gonna be on December 30th. That way, if you don't happen to pick up one of the free keys, you still have plenty of time to pick one up on the Christmas sale. 
Now for the people that haven't tried Riftcat yet, or people that want to try it again now because of this new update, check the description as well, I've got a link for the download there. Now on a side note, you've probably noticed by now that I haven't been posting really regularly on YouTube, but I am going to be live streaming a lot more VR games on Twitch using Mixed Reality and my Xbox One Kinect that I've modded in a different video that I've created. So if you are interested in watching some gaming in VR, be sure to stop by Twitch and check me out there and leave a follow so you can catch me online playing some games later. I'll be playing a whole different range of games, but right now I'm primarily focusing on Beat Saber. Now yes, I am going to be using my Oculus Rift for any kind of streaming, but I do still like to keep myself up to date on alternative VR as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.